has made cancer awareness and fundraising her life's mission. Through her advocacy, she's also supporting some of the most cutting-edge doctors on the planet. That's why she's today's Rad Human. Y'all, please welcome from United Cancer Front activist and philanthropist Lily Tartikoff. Give it up for her. And meet Lauren, the Practical Jokers. I don't know if you've ever met everybody before. Oh, well, it's great. I've only yes, been yes. voted as a bad human, so it must be <laughs> nice to be a rad human. It's a, it's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually really incredible. You have been able to raise over $81 million. Wow. Like, that, how did you... How does one get involved in this? First, How did can you... I say it is so great to be back at NBC. Yes! <laughs> yes! It's home. It's it home. is. Yeah. This is home away from home. But yeah. So my late husband, Brandon Tartikoff, he had been diagnosed and treated for Hodgkin's disease. Hodgkin's disease is a cancer of the lymph nodes. So mm -hmm. he had, when he was 26 years old. Yeah. Anyhow, um, he just didn't look right soon after I married him. And he set up an appointment and Denny met with Dr. Slayman, sorry, Dr. Slayman met with Brandon and determined that his Hodgkin's disease had come back. So we had to go in and they'd lay that massive tray of drugs and it took hours and hours and Dr. Slayman was supervised. And he was on the phone for hours talking and screaming about yeah. this non-toxic treatment for cancer. And I, of course, was eavesdropping. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was probably a good thing, I would have right? done that as well. Yes, I want to be involved yes. in that. So yeah. after a year, Brandon's treatments were over. And just in case anybody knows, Brandon actually was the chairman of NBC, so this is what she said, welcoming well, back home. Yeah, yeah your husband yes. yeah, ran this. So yes, yeah, he did, and he yeah. loved it. So um, he, anyhow, it took a year, and Dr. Slayman ad added 15 years to his life. And I said to Dr. Slayman, when your science is together, I am going to raise the money for that science. And you, you make a promise, you, uh, you follow through. Deliver. That is, you deliver. Big time. That is, it's insane. That's, it's hard fundraising. It's hard doing that. It's yes. hard to ask people for money. So it's like, it, your earliest fundraising, though, led to a drug that saves lives. So seven years later, um, he finally said yes. And then I realized I had never raised money. But by chance, I met this with Brandon, this incredibly successful businessman named Ronald Perlman who owned Revlon. And I thought, if, in fact, when I met him, I thought he's it. He had no idea what I was thinking, but I thought if I can convince him that um, if he cared about women's health and their well-being, as well as their shade of lipstick, it would be so profound and so meaningful. And so Dr. Slayman, Ronald Perlman, and I created the Revlon UCLA Women's Cancer Research Program. We created 10 fire and ice balls, and 38 Revlon run walks. And when 30 to 40,000 people came out for those run walks, they were so empowered. But what they didn't realize was they are the ones that helped us raise, along with the fire and ice ball, they are the ones that helped us raise this money yeah. for this uh, targeted therapy. So then we took all that money over 28 years, and we put it into Dr. Slayman and his colleagues. And they came um, up research, with this amazing drug. And they drug. came up with two targeted therapies. One's called Herceptin, one's called Ibrance. And a targeted therapy is one that shuts down the cancer cells and doesn't harm the good, healthy ones. And these became FDA approved. These were revolutionary. And they literally help 85% of all the women with breast cancer. And we hadn't wow. seen anything like this in 60 years. Amazing. Wow. wow. So, of course, I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you did. I know, but it might not have happened without you caring. It takes Thank one person you. to really light that fire, and then it catches, you know? This science is so urgent. We all know everyone here, everyone watching the show, everyone's affected or mm -hmm. indirectly or indirectly by cancer. Mm -hmm. And so now we had to come. Now I had to figure out some way to raise a massive amount of money. Yeah. Wow. How proud would Brandon be of you? Like, you know what I'm saying? I what think you're he doing. would think that I was still out of control and obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, on break, I was like, hey, a lot of people are <clears throat> obsessed with things that aren't important, you know, social uh, media. And so, like, you know, we're, yes. we're in our own little selfish world. Your obsession is something that's helping millions of people. It's so, amazing. You so you, you've raised $81 million. No, but not by myself. We, we still yes. owe late fees at Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> Blockbuster? Yeah. You just pulled a Blockbuster. Yeah, Blockbuster, right. Blockbuster. So if everybody could take out $100 and pass it forward, we're going to Start right here. Yes. So I did your dancer donate challenge. Oh, yes. Can you tell everybody about that? Okay. I was tired. <laughs> you were fabulous. <sighs> so we had to come up. We I basically thought. <laughs> oh, God. Well, she you was our first dancer. I know. She's our poster I, girl I for dancer I was very excited donate. about 
wasn't doing it, yes. but at the same time, I was like, I didn't realize how long this amount of time was until I started moving, because yes. mama yes. doesn't work out. Yes. But, <laughs> so tell everybody, so now it's a dance and donate, right? right? So we had to, I realized that we needed to tap into social media. Yeah. So, because we had to reach thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So anyhow, so we created Dance or Donate. So if you go online, www.danceordonate.org, okay? And you, oh wait, first, so we had dancers. And you had like 600,000 people watch you dance. It was like a massive oh, number. I didn't even know that. You had so sorry. many people I'm watch sorry. you dance. I'm apologizing now. <laughs> and people all over the world danced. It was incredible. But what I realized was I had to go back to the drawing board because I wasn't raising money. So I had you were to, raising maybe awareness and people getting into it. Which that was not good enough. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, I needed you. to, they had all this science, like ready to go out the gate. So I needed to create a fundraising page, like as simple as a fundraising page. So if you go to www. Dance, Dance or, or donate. donate dot org. org. Yep. No, Get and it, this Joe. time create a fundraising page. Sure. Now okay? you want me to? Yeah. yeah. You wanna... <laughs> now you go to all your friends and all your family and you get them to donate $5 here, $5 here, and we will cure cancer. Yes. And that's Ooh. not asking you yes. that. Like, yes. if everybody, you know, everybody always thinks of it as like, yes. I have to donate a huge amount. Donate. Yes. It's like that biblical story. You know, donate what you right. can yes. because you are affected by cancer, whether you know indirectly, like, it's everywhere. Yes. And so this research is very necessary, and I yes. was so it's excited urgent. you were coming. It is and urgent we is the best so word. we are so grateful. Grateful. Urgent yes, is the best word. Yes, to all word. of you. We're going to do this. We're yeah. going to get it done. Yes. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank yes. You. yes. Thank oh, you. I didn't stand. I got food on my leg. <laughs> and joining us now is the man behind some of the most groundbreaking cancer treatments in decades, y'all, Dr. Dennis Slayman. Give it up for him. It is an honor to meet you. It's not only nice to meet you, it's an honor to meet you. You're literally changing lives and saving lives. I can't even imagine how much pressure that must feel like as well. But now that I'm thinking about it, didn't mean to add to it. Um, <laughs> but Dr. Slim, what is the biggest misconception you feel that people have about cancer? I think perhaps the biggest mis misconception when a diagnosis happens, people say you have lung cancer or colon cancer or breast cancer. They assume it's one disease. And we should have learned that since people have very different outcomes, we were dealing with a group of diseases. So breast cancer is not one disease, it's a spectrum of diseases. Different types of. The same is true with lung, the same is true with colon. So we move away from the old type of therapy where we throw in a bomb and hope we kill more bad than good cells and yeah. target what's broken. Yeah, amen, all right. Well, tell us about the work in your cool lab. <laughs> Well, what we've been doing is setting up models of various human cancers. As Lily mentioned, the initial work started with breast cancer, but mm -hmm. it's now moved into the other major cancers um, where we really can use more effective therapies. So we've set up the models and set up robotics that will allow us to screen huge numbers of cancer cells, human cancer cells, for what their sensitivities might be to the different therapies we use mm -hmm. that are the new targeted therapies. Yeah. That's what the lab is about right now. Yeah, and that lab is expensive, so I'm sure that's where a lot of the money that you have to raise to figure out how to target yes. these, these specific yes. cells. Right. That's where all that money is going, and that's why it's so important for us to all donate and not just dance. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we do actually have one of Dr. Slayman's patients in the audience. Y'all say hi to Ginger. Hi, Ginger. Hey. <laughs> Ginger, how did you meet Dr. Slayman? Well, I had fourth stage metastatic breast cancer with a, a liver full of tumors, and I'd finished two rounds of chemotherapy and went for the checkup, and what they said was that they, they discovered at that point that I had, my tumors were completely tumor, uh, chemo resistant. And, and so the chemo that, didn't help? And at that time, yeah, it didn't help. And at that time, what that meant was, what they said, you don't need to make another appointment and go home and get your affairs in order. And I just could not accept that. Yeah. Way that to go. Way to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not understand. A lot of people would have broken at that point. And I, that's how I discovered that Dr. Slayman had a trial coming up and it was going to open soon. In 1995, that was then, 2020. I'm 75 now. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Stop talking.
talking until you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's right, and I can talk a lot. Seriously, not gonna stop. Yep, still here, not going anywhere. I see you. Don't walk away from this.